All right, uh, Shalom. Before I start, let me give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakrash, to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Achim, walk, walk, and learning, teaching, and truth, and sincerity. All right, I'm going to let this video play. Now, I'm not going to have it full screen because I notice that sometimes when I full screen my videos, MobiZen won't record it correctly. So I'm going to just have it like this, but this is this video that I came across. It says, Black Business Owners Assaulted by a Man with a Gun. And the title doesn't even do it justice. I'm just going to let this play to show you. And we're going to let this play all the way through. It's five minutes. We'll be stopping to get some scriptures. But something that I really, that kept resonating in my mind with this clip, and which is the way I'm going to title it, this is the reason why our, why the Israelite women doesn't respect, nor acknowledge, nor uh you know, care for the Israelite man. All right, and what I mean by that, you know, dealing with our people in the world in general, you know, we and we understand that we're under these curses, that the Heavenly Father brought us in this low position, but we were not able to defend our nation from this man, Esau Edom, taking us as slaves. We were not able to stop the lynchings. We were not able to stop the whippings, the beatings. All right, we were we we had to pick the cotton. We couldn't we couldn't prevent the slavery that happened to our nation nor could we stop this nation from overtaking us so our women don't view us in that manly powerful role as they should all right which we once again was it was the curses upon our whole nation for our di disobedience to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai but the average person doesn't think like that all right and this is we have deep psychological trauma embedded in us all right when a when a black woman you know she said oh niggas ain't shit she doesn't realize that this all goes back to the fact that our nation was trodden down and taken over therefore a uh, institution and a system was set up to separate our households and to keep the man uh in a weak estate therefore our women do not truly love and respect us and we won't get that back into the kingdom you know hey brothers you you know you may have your family and your woman but even your Israelite woman, she may even know the truth. She doesn't have the love for you that she will have for you in the kingdom when we have our power back. All right, Because ultimately, women respect power, which is why they flock to the men with cars, clothes, and money. All right? So let's let this play. We'll get some scriptures we'll call today. Tell me, call the police. Hey, and his name was Solomon. Peace. His name was Solomon. Hey, and the Lord granted him peace for this situation. He allowed him to. Okay, they allowed Jake wouldn't have made it out of this one. All right, let's let it go. So to give the backstory, uh, these two own a food truck, you know, they got into a little engagement with this Edomite, <laughs> and he was about to blow. On um, February 5th, when we were supposed to meet with Tom too, my husband couldn't make the meeting because he was getting our food truck serviced. Once I got to the meeting, that it just felt like it was something different that we were actually there for. Um, you know, he brought an All Lives Matter shirt to me and um, he was yelling at me with it, um, calling me racist, just making me feel very uncomfortable. I decided to just contact my husband and, you know, I told him like... And the reason that she and they have to go through this man, that they have to work through this man is because of what? We're going to go to Deuteronomy. It tells you that we'll be in the want of what? All right, they run a food truck service and they had to go this go to that man to get their food you know so they can cook their food well and what you're you know they're gonna go on to explain basically that white man was mad tom we'll just call him tom tom was angry you know seeing all the protests and the rioting and blm going on he was angry at them and started accusing them of being racist and you know you see he not only is jake's spirit getting turned up but E's spirit is getting turned up of wanting to kill us. So he was mad and angry. You know, he's dealing with two 
dark-skinned people, you know, so he he was mad and angry. And so it went from being a business meeting to him ranting at that woman. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. It says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. And those things we literally did in slavery. All right. The little bit of clothes you had on your back, they had to stretch 10 years, you know, uh, being hungry, being starved, having to survive that travel on boat across the Atlantic. All right. It says, in, in the want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And these are what we literally experienced during slavery, the yoke upon our necks. All right. From from point you was born to the point you died, you was a slave. But dealing with that verse in the, the middle of the verse where it says, and in one of all things, even now in today's society, if you try to be an independent business owner, you still have to go through people that look like Tom to acquire the resources so you can make your money. The people that are on the dollar bills look like Tom. The people that own the banks that you must go to to get a business loan look like Tom. The people that you sign uh, papers for look like Tom. So ultimately, we're stuck dealing with these Toms. <laughs> All right. So let's let it play some more. You know, and this, hey. Hey, man. Hey, you know, he's making me feel uncomfortable. How far are you? Can you come? And so my husband, he literally stopped everything that he was doing and he raced there because, you know, I was feeling, you know, something wasn't right. So I ended up speaking there in like five minutes. I mean, you could tell he acting weird because even when I'm talking to him, I'm having a conversation, he's not looking at me, he's not paying attention. And then he just like lost it. And that's when he pulled out the gun. Yeah, that's when he pulled out the weapon. So this dude pulled out a gun on them because he had the intention probably to kill them. You know, he was tired of all the, seeing all this BLM. He was tired of, you know, the fact that Esau sperm count is going down. He, he wake up, he's seeing big booty white women with Jake and shit. You know, he rappers, you know, he, you know, he's and these people don't know no better. You know, they don't know what the hell's going on. That is really an agenda. Hey, and that's another thing, brothers. I, hey, don't get too caught up in these heathen women. They don't really care about us or like us. It's just the fad. But, you know, so this devil seeing all that. He's like, man, fuck that. I'm going to kill me. I'm going to I'm going rabbit hunting today on these two Jake. And I give it to Jake. He hopped into action. He hopped into action. He's better than me. There wouldn't have been no holding that nigga till the cops showed up. The cops would have been picking up a deceased corpse. All right, I'm gonna just leave that. I'm gonna just leave. I'm gonna leave that there. All right, and you know, hopefully, hey, and you how about Shmuel Shai? They keep us from situations like this. But trust, hey, man, I can only imagine he probably wanted to kill dude. But let, let's let it play some more. We'll get some more scriptures. Shit, man. You know, ima just just imagine that, y'all. You sitting there talking with a dude. This man pulls out a, a, a weapon to, to to kill you and your and your and your wife to kill you and your wife. All right, we didn't have any. And hey, let's go now. Let's come back to Deuteronomy. What is uh, there's a particular verse, something that we were stripped of. Now, had we been able to do this in the kingdom, I mean, not in the kingdom, had we have been able to do this in 70 AD, had we have been able to do this when Esau came to put us on them slave boats, we probably wouldn't have as much problems that we're having now because we would still have that honor and integrity for being men that can stand up and go to war and defend our nation but we don't have that y'all we were to, we were kicked out of Jerusalem by the Romans we were taking slaves over here so and so this psychologically is the reason why our women and children do not respect us as men and why the Israelite household is in complete disorder and uh in, in complete disorder and disarray when you when the men can't get up and defend the nation that nation is through all right and that's what happened to us, all right? Deuteronomy 28 and 32. It says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What does that mean? We were taking slaves, literally. Your life force no longer belongs to you. You will do as you told, or you can suffer the penalty of death. It says, And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. You had to watch your children be taken, get sold to a different plantation, and all you could do was hold your wife while she was screaming and crying. And what would start to happen? She would build up resentment towards you because truly we weren't men. We didn't have the ability to protect our family. You know? Hey, what was that movie? Uh, the original uh, Roots. All right. You know, the, uh, uh, yeah, you get sold. All you can do is watch your children get sold. There's nothing you could do. It says, and there shall be no might in thine hand. And that's what we didn't have. We didn't have any might, y'all. But we're going to get this mic back here soon, and we will get our power back. And I'm going to have to get a clip from uh, that movie, uh, Hancock, you know, a scene that I like out of that movie. We're going we're gonna to get our power back in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. 
And the, 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 the funny thing is that he's going to use us. I'm going to get that real quick, Isaiah, and we'll go back to the clip. The very same ones that were at the bottom and trodden down, he's going to use us to get our revenge on these assholes, which is going to make it uh, it's going to make it bittersweet because the very same people that did us greasy, we're going to get them right back. This is going to be, what is this? Uh, is it Isaiah 14 or 13? Let me see. Okay, yeah. Uh, Isaiah 14 and 2, it says, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And that's coming soon, y'all, and I can't fucking wait. I don't know about you. I don't know what you do in your day-to-day, -day, but I can't fucking wait. And if you, if you aren't looking towards this, then you're bullshitting in the spirit. You about you bullshitting. All right? You know, hey, we, we deal with our daily stuff that we got to deal with but this truth is our main focus i cannot wait for this day we're not we're not living here we will not be living until we get to our kingdom to have these heathen that are not fit to rule this planet back underneath us so we can be ruling in perfection with yahweh bashim yahweh shai all right the very the very same slaves are going to take these assholes back as slaves all right the irony is not lost on me <laughs> all right let's let it go some more So it says the wife grappled with the idea of calling the police because she feared that the police would show up and shoot the husband, which has happened. You have had so-called people of color call the police in need of help and the police mistake us and kill us when we're the ones who called for help. This happened plenty of times. Being married to a black man, it was hard at that moment. I'm sorry. Yes, I was just like, sure. if I call the police, this may be it for him. Yep. This may be it. I was scared. My husband had to tell me, call the police. I didn't feel like <laughs> it's sad because I didn't feel like that was the first people that can help. You that's know? the reality and, of our you know, situation. Once they arrived, I literally, I stopped them at the door. I would not let anybody. I stood in the doorway and I begged them. Every last one of those officers who had their guns, I said, please do not kill my husband. 11 that minutes. That was the slowest 11 minutes ever. Yeah. It was. I'm thinking like, man, am so I gonna make it out of this situation alive? Or, or is the police are the police gonna shoot me? Well, this happened this year, y'all, back in February. Look at this crazy this hold up. No, fuck that. No, fuck that. Fuck that, bro. I'm thinking hold like, up. man, am I gonna make it out of this situation alive? Or or is the police are the police gonna shoot me? Hang on, we gonna pause it. Get this man's face Tom now now does this look like a man who's fit to be walking around in public does this looks like a man who should be owning anything no but these are the groups of people that are at the tops of society running the shots why do you think the world is the way that it is you wonder why the food is corrupted the water is corrupted the minds of the people the music is bending people to do things that they shouldn't everything that you see on media is filth there's nothing but murder death and destruction in the world it's because people the elites wake up looking like that look at this man's face what does the scripture say you can tell him a countenance of a man or no you can tell a man by this countenance all right this is a dress a deranged man he would have killed the shit out of both of them had not the lord put the spirit on jake to get up and grab his ass Hey, it tells you one people shall be stronger than the other people. Hey, Jake put them, <laughs> Jake put them hands on them. All right, that is the face of a man who hates our guts, and we can never forget that. We need this to be heard because you know this man is possibly not even facing any jail time. They let him out the next morning at 4:38 a.m. Yep. So wow. So he did all that. And he didn't even go to jail, y'all. Yo, he got out. You know, let that be one of us about to blow away or eat of my family. The cops, immediately as the cops show up, when they see you, they're doing you. Like, that's, you, you should already have put in your will and, uh, you know, your final love letters to everybody. Because as soon as you get spotted, you're getting knocked off on sight. But that's how he does. They, they have, they take care of their own, even when their own do wrong. And that, it, once again, that goes to show you, this is not our captivity, nor is it. I mean, so, okay, this is not our kingdom, y'all. This is our captivity. Let me get this real quick. Uh, let's get this. Right here. Sirach 13 and 3. The rich man hath done wrong 
and yet he threateneth with all. That man did them wrong. He was ready to he was ready to kill with it. It says the poor is wronged and he must entreat also. This is one of my favorite scriptures. These people do us wrong and we still have to just beg and cry at the bottom. You know, we keep getting shot and killed and we understand all these things are controlled by the Heavenly Father. You know, all the strings are being pulled. But this shows you the reality of our situation. This is why she was scared to call the cops because even though we might be getting a gun pointed at our face, we know that if we call the police, we're going to have bigger guns pointed in our faces. All right? So which one you, hey, well, as the saying goes, it's better to deal with the devil you know than the devil you don't. <laughs> and the, the cold thing is, now had they not called the police, now had Jake took that gun, beat that, you know, ended, took Tom out in the most convenient manner possible, and they just went home, the police would have showed up at their house with straight death warrant. You know, would have came and took them to jail and said, oh, they assassinated them, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll go look at back at the camera. They're going to be like, oh, well, why didn't you call the police? Because this would have happened. Y'all would have showed up and you would have shot me. You know, this is what we're dealing with here, y'all. So this is why there's no, this is why the disconnect in our household is there. We as the Israelite men, right now as it stands, we don't have the power. We can't stop this. Even standing there holding that man down, as you can see in this frame, with all those police standing there, they could have easily just mistaken him and, and opened his, you know, and, and just and, and sent the Jake to the spiritual realm and the Edomite would have been good, you know. But this is crazy. This is crazy. He's not even, he's out walking around right now. You know, imagine that. Imagine you you aim one of them things at somebody. Let you just beat somebody. Let you, the Israelite man, let you get into a fight at Walmart. You're, you're going to be, you're going to have some time to do, you know. So let's let he it did, He barely did any jail time. So it's like... They're basically saying like, oh, yeah, he did it, but we can't prove that he was going to kill you. That's and crazy. I hope that the prosecutor, you know, gives him a harsher um, <laughs> Jake what, Goofy, man. He sentence give a because shit. she it's literally told us out of her mouth he that at <laughs> there's a possibility that he's not facing any jail time. Yeah, that's crazy. Man. At that's all. That's crazy. That's unjust because this place is unjust. So now, now they don't know if it was a hate crime, but he had an All Lives Matter shirt and was calling her racist. And they lost a substantial amount of inventory. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, so they lost their. So not only did they almost get killed, now they lost their, the ability for their food truck where they were getting food. And it looked like Jake just came over here and broke down a little bit because his life was probably flashing before his eyes for a second. You know, and this woman came to comfort him. You know, hey Lord, hey Lord, uh, you know, even wicked Jake in the world. You know, the Lord still looks out for his people, y'all. You know, we are still the children of Israel. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, they show us more grace than what we deserve. And you best believe the angel put the spirit on him to, to, to make it out of that, you know. He's probably crying a little bit right there. She opens the door in the midst of the police and everything there. And she's like, you guys can come get all your stuff. Mm. And we're like, at that exact moment. So the like, wife of that man with the gun basically just kicked them out after her husband pulled a gun on them. Like, where are we possibly going to go? My husband, he went out, he got an emergency, like he bought a, a deep freezer and it, it still didn't work. Like, you know, so it, it really sucks. And that's the curses. Cursed is, hey, Deuteronomy, thy store. Oh, let's get that real quick. And she's going to go on to explain it, you know. Hey, this is no joke, y'all. We are still here. This why this this is just not our uh, this is not our world, y'all. So don't be trying to don't don't be getting things confused out here. You know, if, hey, if you have the ability to get you a good little job to provide for yourself and your family, then do so. But don't be out here trying to climb to the top of society, y'all. This is not our this is not our place, nor is it our rest at all. All right, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna let her talk, and I'll come back to the scripture. <laughs> It's like we really got the bad end of all of this. Yeah. It's very like discouraging. It makes you not even want to go for your dream. Like, you know, I had a dream of being a food truck owner and my husband made that possible. And then for somebody to, you know, just take that, that thrive out of us, it, it really sucks. Cause we were on a roll. We were doing pretty good, you know. Yeah, they don't know if they can continue the business. So I'll get that. So now their business is, is, is in jeopardy. And that Jake seems to be pretty well tempered. 
Cause I wouldn't be, I'd be in that interview hot. You know, I'd be, I'd, I'd be looking for Tom. I'd be middle, I'd be looking for Mr. Toot. Mr. Toot would be on my radar. All right, Deuteronomy 28 and 16. It says, Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall thy basket, cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Once again, you know, they're trying to set up that business. So now here it is, and in, in saving his own life, now they may uh, lose that business, which is things, those things we, experienced you know dating back to slavery now if you did stand up to master if you did try to catch that whip on the way in if you did try to stop him from molesting your wife or children or yourself now you have to deal with getting put to death or you know having to run away from the plantation and starve somewhere because you don't know any you didn't have any skills all you need to do is pick cotton so this man has created a system to where we're fucked inside of it and we're fucked if we're stepped out of it that is why we need yahweh bashim yahweh shai at all at all in all intents and purposes and we're going to come back to this i'm gonna let it play out a little bit more because there's a certain you know there's just just to add insult to injury you know what else happened and that they were made traumatized by the incident britney says she was pregnant at the time of the incident and suffered a miscarriage a week and a half later right there y'all so the wife had a miscarriage after that. And I don't, hey, I'm willing to bet you that was induced from the st life threatening stress that probably overtook her body from this event. And what did the scripture say about that? You know, hey, this was just a fucked up situation all around the board. Like she said, we got the bad end of all of this. You know, there ain't really no shining light to that story other than you survived it. You know, what did the scripture say about that? Hey, she, hey, let me, let me get that. Right here, Exodus 21 and 22. Psh, man. Oh, we, man, man. That dude, hey, look, that Jake, whatever little spirit is on him to be, he probably smoke a lot of weed because that dude too calm. Mr. Tom Toot would be a couple feet under somewhere. Mr. Tom Toot wouldn't be here no more. All right. And, you know, that's, that's just me talking and blowing off steam. But damn, man, you know, destroyed your business, almost killed you, and you lost your kid over this fucker. And we can't, and this motherfucker is walking around. Didn't even, y'all could at least put, could have put the mother, you could at least keep him in just county jail. But nope, not, not in Babylon. Exodus 21 and 22. It says, if men strive, which those two men did, they were battling over that pistol and hurt a woman with child. Now did the woman receive physical damage from the video didn't look like it, but she was undergoing, she, I'm willing to bet you she underwent psychological and emotional trauma. It says, and hurt a woman with child or a woman that is pregnant so that her fruit depart from her, meaning that the child dies or it miscarries, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished, according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges to determine. Ooh, so the husband is allowed to give out the judgment on that. And nine times out of ten, it probably would have been death, you know. Here it is, you 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 mixing it up, which is why there's the the other scripture, a woman shouldn't try to jump in between men when they're fighting, you know, but you mixing it up with a dude, he turned, knocks your girl out, your girl miscarries, you're going to want that man dead. And that's just the plain, honest, to goodness truth. Verse 23, it says, and if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for strife and that's what we will only receive this when our lord returns because we can't give this out to these assholes right now because they're over us but this is a sad story y'all you know this is just this is just effed that's just f for them they survived it sounded like they had other kids in the background but you know the one in their womb didn't make it and i and i will attribute that to this situation i'm more than sure you know whatever they say but there's one more clip i want to get real quick and we'll end it and hopefully because if they take this video down, then I'll go back and edit this last clip out because it's from a movie. So we'll see. All right. Well, I can't find the scene anywhere, of course. But basically, there was a scene in Hancock where Red, the <laughs> Edomite-looking dude, he had said to... Hancock had embarrassed two dudes. And Red had said something to them. He had said, uh, you know, do you boys want to get your power back? Talking about get revenge back on Hancock because of what he had did to them, how he embarrassed them. Uh, this it, it would it would have went cooler if I had the scene, but we're gonna get this scripture because hey, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, we're going to get our power back, and we're gonna we're gonna we are going to do bad things to these 
We're going to do or set some bad things. Bad things. But, hey, we going to say. Hey, and it's all going to be lawful and righteous. And you know what? I, I mentioned it at camp this past Saturday. The righteousness. We're going to do them worse in righteousness than what they did to us in wickedness. We're going to make them suffer more and feel more pain and horror in righteousness than they brought to us in wickedness. All right. We're not going up no man's backside. We're not uh, uh, taking a man's wife. We're not doing things that were foul like that, you know, touching, you know, prepubescent children and whatnot. We're going to do things to them righteously, and it's still going to be more horrifying. And that's amazing. All right. Jeremiah 51 and 19, it says, The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. Hey, the elect is literally going to have, is going to be uh, able to partake in some of that business. All right, and it's going to be amazing, Lord willing. You know, us brothers, we'd be a part of that, you know, or at least be able to witness it. You know, that's, that's, hey. That's all. That's basically all I fantasize about all day. You know, just, <laughs> just, just, just ripping this place to pieces. You know, uh, I'll be listening to, to music. You know, my exercise music, my hardcore music, and I can just imagine just buildings, just crushing buildings. You know, spitting fire on these people, lightning bolts. You know, uh, uh, ripping the earth under from these people, and just getting revenge in the name of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. All right, I'll get this last one. Uh. Micah 4 and 13, it says, Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. So after we smash all these people, we're going to jack their shit, just like how they did us. And this is future prophecy. We didn't do this, y'all. We didn't get to do this in no time in history. So this is in, this is in, in game, into the world prophecy that's going to be happening now. All right, the elect men are going to be getting down alongside Yahweh Shai, down alongside Mike Allah and the angels, and it's going to be it's going to be beautiful. All right, this is just a little glimpse, bringing it back to this clip. You know, this is a you know tying it all in. This is why we don't have that respect that that we should have in our households. You know, so that's about it. I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem. Rakhakurash, the honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim. Walk, walk, and learning, teaching, and truth, and sincerity. I'm going to say Shalom.